Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and already video number 8 of our MATLAB series. Today we have a very special video and I'm very proud that you actually see this video right now. It is going to talk about a very important topic as well. It is about MATLAB's performance, how you can measure its performance with a so-called profiler, but also increase the performance, but also know the pros and cons of MATLAB in general, because we haven't talked too much about it. So I want to make sure to point everything out a little bit in a little bit more detail to make sure that you really understand what the pros and cons of MATLAB are. Besides that, I want to show you the TikTok command as already announced in the last video. With the TikTok command, you can basically measure the time it takes to execute your code from the beginning to the end. We will also use bar plots using the TikTok command. There we can see how, let's say, one snippet of code performs compared to other snippets of code. And we use this technique of creating bar plots to also measure errors later on uh, when it comes to global errors, local errors and stuff like that. So I would say that we jump right into our MATLAB environment again and I'll show you how you can do this amazing stuff that will for sure increase your MATLAB knowledge and make you a MATLAB pro. Let's go. Hey guys and welcome back to the MATLAB environment. I've already prepared the script as you can see and today we're going with a pre-allocation example from the MATLAB documentation and the source can be found here. And as always I will upload every MATLAB script and code that I use to my GitHub repo. Link can be found in the description. So as a bad example we take this part of the code and with pre-allocation we use this part of the code. What that means is that we here initialize x by 0. So we only have a scalar, that means a number that is initialized with 0. And with pre-allocation we use the whole matrix and allocate every entry of the matrix with zeros. And we will see what that actually means in terms of performance. So here we create a figure for this bar plot that we create. With this command we create a bar plot. Here we are, we are doing some editing on the axis, create a title and fix the Y label. And in the third section we will talk briefly about G objects and what this does. So let's first execute this part of the code. Let's just comment this one here and execute the first part. And as you can see, we have around 0.1 second for the code with no pre-allocation and we have around 0.01 second for with pre-allocation. So that's an order of magnitude difference. We'll just make it bigger. So it's quite significant. And if you have a look at the code snippet, they are quite small actually. So let's imagine you have bigger chunks of code. This can be very drastic in terms of performance. So just to explain what I've done here, so the T1, the TikTok command itself, I can also write it like this, like TikTok, and it would output me the, the time. We can quickly do that. For the first part, you can see here 0.09 seconds. But what I've done is to create a vector T with two entries, and the first entry is the time of the first code part, and the second entry is the entry of the second code part. So the difference here is with pre-allocation is that a matrix X will be created with around like with 1 million values and each time the for loop iterates the one new entry will be created. So the matrix has zero entries so it's only a scalar at the beginning then it has two entries, three entries, four entries and so on until it has 1 million entries which is very time consuming. So we can work around that problem by using the pre-allocation right here. Just comment it with pre-allocation. This is the pre-allocation part actually. The rest of the code is identical. You can do the same pre-allocation process for figures. That's what I've shown here. Let's just uncomment this part of the code here. And if we execute now everything, you can see that we can create subplots here. The time savings might not be significant here but let's imagine you have very many subplots with a lot of data in them 
this can become quite handy. You can also use pre-allocation for cell data, but you can find more information in the documentation and I will put a link of the documentation down in the description so you can read through it in your spare time. So one thing I want to explain to you as well is how to use the profiler and the profiler can be used clicking the run and time button. So if I click this, take some time, create the figures and then give me a summary of all the functions that have been executed during this this code runtime so to speak and here if we go to performance we can see that line 16 actually took the longest time with around one quarter of the time if we go to 16 we can see that it's it has, has this reddish color very red color here and that means that we have to pay attention this is a hot spot in our code and maybe we can optimize that or use another workaround we have the same line of code here in line 25 but it's not as red as this one because here we use pre-allocation and the time consumption is not as significant as in the other part of the code. If we scroll through the code we can also see other red parts like the bar plot for instance and also using the subplot command so maybe we find ways to optimize these as well. So we also see that we didn't use clear all but only clear and we shouldn't use clear all also to improve the performance of our code. We also shouldn't use words like we have used before, like whose, which, or let's say exist, of existing of a specific variable inside of our code. Uh, this is very expensive when it comes to computation. And what we also should not use is to use functions like eval, eval c, eval in, and for instance, f eval and then the function name right here so i will just comment this you can find the code in the github repo as i already mentioned so just to keep in mind that you shouldn't use these ones attention and attention right and if possible you also should not use uh, the programmatic use of cd so to, to change directory inside of the code adding a path or using rm path for instance because this will result in so-called code recompilation which makes this only clear command here basically useless because it will recompile the code and if we execute the code twice it will just always recompile the code uh, which doesn't make sense at all. Uh, one additional quick tip I want to tell you about before I forget it is that you can use the profiler that we have used programmatically. So if we remove tick, let's say, and we write profile on, just comment this one, then profile viewer and execute this now we can immediately see that it calls the profiler and the code in between this profile on and profile viewer will be evaluated. So we can see line 21, critical, make sure to check it and maybe we can optimize this code. Just as a quick tip and I will just comment this right here and you can find it of course in the script and I will leave it in so that you can play around with it. So this was video number eight of our MATLAB series. I really hope that you enjoyed the video and in the next uh, MATLAB video, we are going to have a closer look at special operations. That will include how we can use MATLAB functions to create polynomial functions by only using the coefficients of the polynomial. And we will also see how you use or find roots by using the root function inside of MATLAB. I will also go a little bit more into depth when it comes to relational operators. We will talk about the greatest common divisor and least common divisor so that you have at least seen them and know maybe how to use them in case you need them in the future. But that will be covered in the next video. And until then, and I would say, make sure to keep engineering your mind and much love to you all right there. Peace.